The average modern mountain bike has around 40 bolts holding it together. And that's not even including if it's a full suspension frame, which of course if it is, it's got shock hardware and then all the pivots and extra bolts that go with that. So it's unsurprising from time to time, a few of those bolts are gonna rattle loose. Now it's really important to not only keep those bolts tight and secure, but to not over tighten them. So here's how you do it. First things first is to have a look at the various tools you're gonna to need to secure safely all of those bolts on your bike. Now, a torque wrench is the sensible option, but we're gonna to get to that in a minute. So let's just go to the first options, which most of you are gonna have. So the most common option you're gonna find is the Allen key or the hex wrench. These are used on most parts of the bike, varying from anything from a two millimeter up to a 10 millimeter. Now with the Torx key, they're less commonly used on overall parts of the bikes, but they're very commonly used on disc rotors disc brake hardware, and more increasingly on the cockpit parts of the bike. And I think in the years to come, you're gonna start seeing them creeping in on other parts of the bike too. If you're familiar with working on your bike and you do some regular bike maintenance, chances are your internal torque wrench, where basically your muscle memory, is well calibrated. And you'll be quite used to how much sort of pressure and torque you can put through specific bolts. Now, I'm guilty of doing this myself. I have access to a full toolkit and I have various torque wrenches myself, but I don't always use them. Sometimes I'll be nipping up a bolt at the side of the trail, in which case I'm not that likely to have a torque wrench with me. Now, there is a couple of ways that you can use the regular Allen key or Torx key to sufficiently tighten stuff without damaging them, but it's not a sure-fired way of knowing that. The best way really is using a torque driver or a torque wrench. We're gonna to get to that in a minute. Now, if you are just gonna use an Allen key or a Torx key to tighten certain bolts on your bike, you do wanna pay attention to those. So I'm just gonna have a look on this particular bike. I've got Ergon lock-on grips, and like most lock-on grips, they've got quite small Allen heads on them. On this one, it's a three millimeter. When tightening them up, if I use the Allen key to its whole length, you've got quite a lot of leverage over the bolt there. You're actually quite likely to snap it. In this case, I'm actually gonna use the shorter end of the Allen key until I just feel that it's about tight enough that feels right to me. And I'll actually check the grip to make sure it doesn't move. Now, of course, that is not an accurate way of tightening it, but it's a method that I'm comfortable with using because I've done this a lot of times and you might be as well. Basically, use your common sense. When it comes to controls, you obviously need to make sure that the controls can't move. Obviously, you don't want your stem to twist, your handlebars to roll in the clamp. But if you over tighten something like your handlebar clamp, there's a good chance you're gonna squash or crack the bar, regardless whether it's aluminium or carbon fiber. So you can use other products to help make this easier. In the case of a bar, like this is a perfect example, I've got an aluminum stem here with a carbon fiber handlebar. I use a carbon assembly compound in here. This is essentially a grease with particles suspended in it that helps grip the handlebar basically, so you don't have to crank up those bolts really, really tight in order for it to not move. So the torque wrench is the obvious solution to securely tightening and safely tightening everything on your bike without risking damage to yourself or your bike. Now, torque wrenches come in a few different variations. You get these big full-size wrenches, which you use with socket sets. You get the slightly smaller ones, which are a bit more realistic for most mountain bikers. You still use these with socket sets, but have an adapter to make sure you can use those. Or you can get these smaller ones, which are really handy. You, know, you can get these in pre-selected torque settings or adjustable ones like this one, which goes from four up to six in half newton meter settings. You simply rotate this around using an Allen key on the end. In the handle, there are various bits in here to make sure it's usable on your bike. That's ideal if your bike has perhaps a carbon frame or carbon handlebars, and you just wanna keep an eye on things, but you don't feel like you want a torque wrench for your whole bike. So that's a really good thing to have. Now the other things are, when you're out on the trails, there are some various other options to keep in your bag. Topeak make a really nice little mini compact one. And also certain manufacturers give torque wrenches with their bikes. It's just an Allen key and it'll have a little socket head on the end and it'll have a little plastic measuring device so you can roughly torque to the correct setting. So whilst they're not completely accurate, it does give you a good ballpark figure of whether you're gonna over tighten a bolt. And to be honest, it's better than nothing. So on the Park ATD1, basically you set the newton meter setting here and I'm gonna do it to five newton meters to suit this stem. It's typically around five newton meters for most stems, although it's definitely worth checking for your particular one. Now, simply it's got metal parts on the internal and it will not let me over tighten these bolts. So if I just go up here and I go to tighten it, I'll feel a natural resistance in it. Just wanna make sure they're roughly equal, there we go. So that's what happens with a 
torque wrench, you can't actually over tighten the bolts. So I know that those bolts are sufficiently tight. Nothing's gonna slip, nothing's gonna break. Dead safe. So this sort of medium sized torque wrench is much more usable for most mountain bikers because you can use these with regular socket sets and they're good for most things on your bike, chaining bolts, handlebars, stems, seat collars, like you name it, you can do it. And if nothing else, it's just great for a peace of mind. Put your bike together with your regular Allen key set and then just go and check all of the bolts afterwards. So in this, in this case, I'm just gonna check the seat collar. So it actually says on it 2.8 newton meters. So I'm just gonna dial this in. If you look closely here, you've got a dial and it does it in 0.2 increments. So I can just take it down to three and then Another click there, and that should be good. Now the key we're using any torque wrench is to make sure we can identify when the stop is. With the little handheld ATD one, it's a very firm click you get, but with some of the ratcheting torque wrenches like this, it's a little less subtle. So you just have to take care, and you'll feel there'll be a natural resistance. There we go. So we've reached our torque setting. So that is securely tightened. And you can obviously double check that by taking the bike out of the stand and wiggling the saddle, making sure it's safe. They're a very appropriate tool to use, especially with the modern mountain bikes of today with lots of carbon and delicate parts on there. Parts are obviously very strong when used correctly, but very easy to damage with stuff like a bolt. And I've seen people hanging off Allen keys before, hearing the bolts cracking. Oh, do not want to be doing that. So there you go, that's the rough basics on using a torque wrench. Of course, you can use this anywhere on your bike with the appropriate sockets and the correct torque setting as long as you've got those. Your bike manufacturer will tell you torque ratings and torque settings for all of the bolts appropriate to your bike and the same with all the components on there. It's easy enough information to find out. Now, I would recommend just having one in your toolkit. A good piece of kit to have just for overall use on the bike. But if you don't wanna have a full torque wrench, these are really, really useful as I've just proven up on the controls. Now, this is a particular area of the bike that you don't want anything to fail. I can tell you firsthand, it's not very nice if a handlebar fails when you ride, especially if it's coming straight out the handlebar stem clamp there. Not good. So the next thing to consider when tightening your bolts up is the bolt orientation or the thread orientation. Now, most typical bolts will always tighten clockwise and loosen counterclockwise, but there are exceptions to that. Now, the first obvious one are the pedals of the bike, which have opposite threads. If you have a look at those, you'll find that the right-hand pedal tightens clockwise, the left-hand pedal tightens anti-clockwise. The result is they both tighten towards the front of the bike. So obviously I just want to tighten this to the front of the bike, but actually it's not that intuitive if you think about it. If it was a regular spanner, you would simply tighten this clockwise towards the front of the bike to tighten that pedal on. You've actually got to rotate the Allen key counterclockwise when it's on the right-hand side in order to tighten the, that thread because you're doing it from the back of the pedal arm. So just take that into account. But at the end of the day, what you've got to remember is both pedals tighten towards the front of the bike. Now some suspension bikes, it's not the case with my particular one here, but some suspension bikes have a two-part system where the bolts hold the back end together, where you actually tighten them counterclockwise. So that is definitely something to factor in before you go hanging off those Allen keys to make sure it's tight. You can also have a little think about why some bolts do come loose. Like in this particular case, look at the bolt that's holding the end of the shock on here. It's a five millimeter Allen key bolt. Although this one's held on with Loctite, so it's not going anywhere. Look at the way the linkage moves, it actually moves against the direction of the bolt. So if, for example, that bolt had seized into the actual linkage itself, there's a chance the bolt could start coming undone with the suspension action. The next thing to consider is that some bolts from time to time are gonna rattle loose on your bike. Might be something that's been on there for some time and it's just worked its way loose. It might be something that was never tightened correctly in the first place. So, Generally speaking, you should be doing a safety check before you ride your bike every single time. Now I know that most of you, and myself included, doesn't tend to do that, but it is something to factor in. You do wanna make sure your basic things, like your wheels are tight, your brakes aren't gonna go anywhere, your brake levers are tight on the handlebars, the handlebar and stem can't twist, all the obvious sort of stuff that could become a hazard. But it does make you think that the other things, the smaller things, you're gonna forget about these. Now, in particular, some of the things that do work themselves loose from time to time are shock bolts, suspension pivots. Another great candidate for working loose on the bike is your saddle rail clamp bolts. Now, something that you tend to just sort of fit and forget and leave them, 
but think about the twisting forces that are constantly going on them as your saddle moves and the rails twist. They're trying to undo those bolts. So it's a good idea to have some Loctite on there, or they just got to remember that, that when you do undo those bolts to remove your saddle or to adjust the saddle angle, make sure you use a quality Allen key because if it does slip, you're going to damage the head of that bolt. Next up are transmission based bolts that work their way loose. My particular bike hasn't got a chainring bolt, so it's a single bolt on the back of the chainring, but that is definitely one to check and that can be a source of creaks. So definitely keep an eye on that one. And the rear mech itself, jockey wheel bolts, if they come loose, you're going to know about that because they're just going to fire off before you'd even realise you should have been checking them. And another great candidate for coming loose is the actual 5mm or the Torx T25 bolt that holds your rear derailleur onto the mech hanger. They can rattle loose, it means your gears will go out, and if it unwinds itself completely, the derailleur is actually going to fall off. Not seen that one before, but it could definitely happen. And of course, if your bike has any sort of bolt-on dropouts, those dropouts, of course, will have small bolts holding them in. Now, the pitch on those threads is very small, so the chances are that if it's not being put in with Loctite, it will rattle loose at some point, and I've seen this on many different bike designs. So it's actually a good idea when you're giving your bike a clean to work your way around all of the bolts and make sure that they're nice and tight. Now, something else that doesn't tend to come loose that often, but it's definitely worth checking for your own safety, are brake caliper bolts, and then, of course, a disc bolt. You do not want those things to come loose and fall out. Needless to say, what's going to happen? Now your last major point to take into account is delicate bolts. Now there are a lot of delicate bolts. I've already referenced the handlebar grip bolts. They are so easy to snap the head off those bolts, rendering those grips fairly useless unless you can manage to get that bit of the bolt out. So make sure you do not over tighten those. Your handlebar stem is vital to not over tighten that because you don't want to crush the bar. And I would definitely recommend a torque wrench for that part of your bicycle. On my own particular bike, I like to have my brake levers just the tiniest bit under the recommended torque setting. They're not gonna move when I'm riding the bike, but if I crash, and let's face it, it happens time to time, <laughs> it does mean that they can move and won't necessarily either A, damage themselves, or B, score and damage the handlebar. You see this quite a lot on the downhill scene because if those guys have a crash in a the race, they need to get back on as fast as possible. And if those brake levers have moved and they can't move them back, it's wasting valuable time. A lot of the smarter riders do have that sort of setup where you can just move them back manually, get going straight away. And I do recommend that. I think that's a good thing to bear in mind. But obviously, you want to make sure that those brake levers can't move just in normal operation. And the last point to make, of course, on your bike is that safety check that I referenced earlier. You really should be checking all of your major bolts, nuts, everything on the bike. At the very least, check your contact points and your control points. So the handlebars and everything related to that where you're directly getting onto the bike, make sure your pedals are tight, make sure your brakes are secure on the bike and make sure your wheel axles are tight. You don't want anything to fail on the bike when you're riding and really you should be checking this sort of thing. But don't go crazy with the Allen key and not use a torque wrench because you can over tighten stuff and you can damage those bolts, meaning it's gonna be less time on the trail and more time in the workshop, which is not what any of us wanna be doing. So there you go, they're the basics on tightening bolts on your bike and using a torque wrench for safety. For a couple more great videos, click down here for our Creaks and Groans 101. That's how to identify those things when they come loose, where they're likely to come from, and how to stop them creaking. And if you want to see a really cool pro bike check with an interview, click up here for Annie Last Pro Bike. It's a BH Lynx, super nice bike that is. As always, click on that globe to subscribe because we've got new content for you every single week. And if this video has been helpful for you, or you if you like the video, give us a thumbs up.